Hey everyone, Nick Berlin. Today I want to talk to you about bids. As we're talking about your journey of doing an owner build, I want to talk a lot about getting bids for your project. Not a sponsor yet. Dr. Pepper was my sponsor. I, I would probably cry ugly tears full of happiness that if those tears fell on our little plant over here, it would grow six feet tall and have huge biceps. So depending on where you're at in your in your stages, you're, you're gonna need to get bids. Whether you're doing it all in cash or you're financing it, this is something that you need to do early on in your build process. Something that you're going to need is a set of plans, um, your architectural set as well as your structural set. That way the guys that do the structure of your home can give you an accurate bid. To get bids, you're going to need your selections all picked out. So you're going to want to know what type of flooring you're going to want, how many different sheens of paint you're going to be using in the home, all the little nuts and bolts that are going into your home and have your trades priced accordingly. Now you might be saying to yourself, Nick, I don't know what the heck I want in my house. Well, actually reaching out to trades can help you in your selection process. That's something that you can talk to different people about. You can ask your finished carpenter, hey, what do you offer for closets? What other cool things can we do in our house? And I'm sure the finished carpenter is gonna have a ton of different things that he can say. You can also talk to your plumber and say, what's really popular right now? What have you seen that's been really cool? He might talk to you about freestanding tubs. He might talk to you about freestanding tubs being in the shower area. You can talk to your electrician and say, what are some options that you have of some really cool products that we can put into our home? The trades know a lot of different things and they can help you in your selection process. If something is a good idea or a bad idea, just based off their own personal experience. Pocket doors, terrible idea. Do not do pocket doors. They are a warranty nightmare. They're just dumb. I don't know what else to say. A good rule of thumb with getting bids is you're gonna to wanna to talk to at least three different people and get numbers from them. So three foundation guys, three framers, three plumbers, you want three of everything. And the reason why is this, even let's say you know, you know someone who's an electrician and you wanna use this electrician. So you're gonna give him your set of plans, he's gonna give you a bid, and he's the guy that you wanna use. Not everyone is perfect and someone might miss something. What happens if someone misses something and you only have one bid? And let's say your electrician is only gonna charge you, he's gonna charge you $2,000 to do the rough on your house but he missed a, a sheet. He didn't see that you have a basement. And now he's like, oh, I need to charge you $4,000. There's a lot of debate on what you would do there. Do you hold him to the price or do you pay him an honest wage? Let me know in the comments below what, what you would do. But one thing that you can do to make it so that you don't have that issue is just get three bids. Because that way, if one bid is way low, you know that there's probably something wrong with that bid or that they missed something. So get three bids and that way you can see everyone's kind of landing in the same ballpark or one guy's astronomically high you know it, you you want to be able to compare and then you want to be able to see what's in those bids you know compare a to a b to b c to c so you want to see what is in there so that way you can know what one person is going to be giving you as compared to someone else something that you need to know about bids is they do not last forever okay a lot of times at the bottom of the bid or somewhere on the bid they're gonna say what their timeline is. Some will say this bid is good for 30 days. Some will say 60, some will say 90. That's something that you need to be aware of. And if you're at a point where you're trying to talk to your financial institution to get a loan, you might need to adjust some of those numbers and know that they're more than likely gonna go up. Prices in this market don't usually go down. They usually go up. So that means is in your spreadsheet or however you're keeping track of the cost of the build, you might need to put a little bit of an increase on those numbers just in case when you do come and let's say it's time to actually frame and your framer goes, hey, there's a there's an increase in my labor demand. I'm going to be an extra $500 to do this house. That way you've already accounted for it. Now it's going to probably take a while to get bids. If you're doing an owner build, you are a one shot job for these different trades. Most trades have a main guy that they need to take care of. They have one builder that is probably 75 to 90% of their work and then they have some other fill in builders. That's it's not atypical, but that's, you know, there's other people that have it set up differently, but just know however that trade is set up, you are not the most important client to them because it's going to be one project and then you're done is how they're going to see it. Getting the bids in that case can take a while because you're just not the priority. So that's something that you need to be aware of too, is it might take th two weeks, three weeks, four weeks to get bids. And what you need to do is you need to be nice and you need to be consistent and persistent and keep asking them for the bid. You don't have to be a jerk about it, but just little gentle reminders can go a long way. Since you are 
probably not the highest priority. You're probably not gonna get the best price. Going to get a better price than you would with a general contractor typically because your general contractor is gonna get probably a lower price than you will from the subcontractors, but then he's gonna put his markup on top of it. So you're probably still gonna be coming in a little bit better than you would with a general, but just know you're, you're the small guy and you just have to account for that. You need to go through all the different line items in the bids and just make sure everything makes sense as well as double checking the materials that are in there to make sure it's what you want. For example, when we were doing our lumber package, um, we were bid out to do 5 8 inch thick OSB for the roof sheeting. I just wanted a half inch, and I saved a lot of money by going with a half inch as opposed to the 5 8 Before I make some people's, you know, their lids just blow out of anger and frustration, the area where I live does not get a ton of snow, so the half inch was fine. I, even, I talked to my engineer about it, don't panic, he said the half inch was fine. But that's one of those things where if I hadn't looked and said, oh wait, I don't want 5 eighths, I would have gotten 5 eighths inch thick sheeting for my roof and I would have spent a lot of extra money. Going through these different items line by line will help you double check to make sure everyone's bidding out the right things. Let's say you've got three, two, six right hand swing doors on your project. Make sure that there's three of them in the bid, not two and not four. You wanna go through and double check all the different things that people are bidding out to you. One thing to consider is if you don't know if you want something, get a bid for it because you never know if it's gonna come in at a really good price or maybe something else is gonna be cheaper. If you want a bidet, get a bid for a bidet. If you want a fireplace, get a bid for it. Ask those different questions and see what you can do within your budget because you might find room in your budget that makes it so that you can do something cool. Like for us, we were able to do a fireplace because we had room in our budget. My HVAC bid came in a lot lower than I thought it would. And with the additional, or with the cost that I had already budgeted for the HVAC, we were able to get a fireplace. It's one of those things where it doesn't hurt to ask. It actually only helps you to ask. So make sure you ask questions. Make sure you're asking for bids on things. Even if you don't know if you want them, you just want to know what your different options are. If you're interested in learning more about that, hit the subscribe button. It's somewhere down here. I'm not totally sure where it's at, but it's somewhere down there. Hit it. You won't regret it more than likely, possibly. My wife and I, we put out videos about once a week, ranging on topics from how to build your own house, like this series is right here, to different tool setups and different project builds. We're just really here to help inspire people to go out and do things themselves. Mm -hmm.